good evening congratulations to harmon india for organizing such a wonderful academic feast i congratulate the whole team uh, dr ajay shukla dr mayur and dr thani for bringing out the best of the programs uh, at national level uh, the task uh, this team has assigned me to talk a little bit about pitfalls in interpreting taxa scans as we know that uh, osteoporosis is a major public health problem in the country and DAXA is one of the most important modality in measurement of BMD and to diagnose osteoporosis. In fact, in the last 20-25 years, there is an enormous explosion of uh, availability of DAXA machines across the country in various metros. Of course, it is not available in small towns, but it is fairly available in larger towns and everybody is getting exposed to the DEXA scan, which uh, are ordered usually for the diagnosis of osteoporosis or any other pers younger person uh, with fractures. It is the most important to understand the technology behind the DEXA scan as well as to understand what are the problems which one, man one can encounter in the interpretation of DEXA scans. As you know that with every machine, there is a lot of technology involved. And uh, after the application of technology, we get some, some reports and we interpret it. I'm not going to integrity of integrity of the interpretation of DEXA scan, which has been dealt earlier with the previous speakers. But uh, at the same time, we uh, need to know what are the really pitfalls where one clinician can go for an error. As you know, this that DEXA scan is 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 basically a gold standard for measurement of bone mineral density. Uh, at axial skeleton, that is what we call at uh, lumbar spine as well as in the hip area. Uh, since bone turnover is very slow, uh, and and because of slow bone remodeling, so the bone change in the BMD is very very slow actually. So for this, we require a very high accuracy and precision uh, for this measurement of BMD. And it is very important for the diagnosis and the follow up that how the BMD be behaves while on treatment. We use a DAXA basically for measurement of bone mineral density. And uh, because uh, the measurement of bone mineral density is a predictor of the risk of future fractures. And once we start the treatment, it is extremely important to assess the improvement actually, uh, how much BMD is improving or deteriorating or is stable over a period of time. In addition to that, newer modalities of application has arrived like vertebral morphometry where we measure the vertebral heights and see whether the vertebral fractures uh, in the spine or not from uh, thoracic uh, force to lumbar uh, pore. And in addition, we do we can do the body composition analysis. We can, we can measure uh, various parameters like uh, fat, fat mass, lean mass, and uh, various other parameters like android gynoid ratio which are important influencing the bone mineral density and the overall functioning of uh, our body actually. Now, as we require with any technology, errors do happen in reporting, the errors do happen in acquisition of the images, and uh, errors do happen at, man at many other places. And they're not very uncommon actually. Uh, even in the large multicenter clinical trials, these errors do happen. So once you are seeing a scan, one should evaluate the scan for analytical errors. Uh, the, the errors can happen in the interpretation or analysis, either the lumbar spine at the femoral neck or at the forearm, and it's the tune of around 6% to almost 15%. Uh, the important issue is that how often these, do, uh, these errors do happen. Uh, this is a survey of International Society of Clinical Dentistometry uh, for, of the clinicians and technologists. And uh, the question was that how often do you see a patient with previous DEXA report interpretation that is incorrect actually? And if you look at the percentage of responders, at least 6% of these clinicians technologists observe that they see more than 6% of these clinicians and technicians see at least one report, uh, wrong report per day. And if you see at other, uh, other, uh, other bar diagrams, 
that more than one week, one per week, one per month, less than one per month. Uh, it's almost 70 to 27 percent of the uh, technologists and clinicians observe some error in the analysis of DEXA scan. So it is not uncommon. This is a picture of classical picture of uh, DEXA scan report of the lumbar spine, where you can see that on the top, we have a look at uh, demographics, uh, where the name is, sex, uh, height, weight is written. We look at the image of the spine actually, and uh, we look at the uh, T-score and Z-score in this, in this box. And uh, when we look at the plotting of this uh, BMD on this graph, or this BM, uh, uh, graph of BMD against the age. So this is how the uh, one has to look at demographics, one has to look at image, one has to look at T-score and Z-score. Uh, in fact, if you look at the table, uh, of lumbar spine, it is region L1, L2, L3, and L4 vertebrae, and the total is L1 to L4. We look at the area, look, look at the body, uh, bone mineral content, and bone mineral density, T score, Z score, and uh, these are the parameters which, which we look at. Now, errors in the BMD measurements can happen because of incorrect demographic data, which relates to age, sex, ethnicity weight and height. As you know that there is a progressive decline of the BMD with the uh, progressive age. The BMD can be different from male and female actually. So therefore we have a different normal data for male and females. The, uh, the ethnicity varies. Of course we are using more of the Caucasian data in our country because of non-availability of the local, local uh, national reference range. So still we are using Caucasian but uh, it is important to have the proper reference national reference data actually. Uh, weight and height should be accurately measured because this influences the BMD as well as the interpretation of the uh, BMD analysis. One has to look at the normative database because uh, this normal database is specifically for the machine actually. So this I would be dealing with later. There could be positioning error of the spine and the hip because these are the two sets which we commonly measure. There could be problem with the artifacts and the one we have to look at rate of change. Now, when we look at the positioning of lumbar spine, actually the position of the lumbar spine has to be correct. Actually, this, the spine should be straight. The spine should be in the, the spinous process, uh, and the spine should be central in the field of the of the uh, of this uh, area being uh, what do you call it region of interest actually. And the spinous process, the spinous process should be in the vertical line actually. And this is how the person is positioned on the BMD table. He lies on the lies on the table uh, with the legs on the lying on the block in the perpendicular to the table actually. And this brings the spine into the center of the field as well as straight forward, as much as straight forward. Now, when we are looking at the image, we uh, we identify the image by the vertebral shape. Actually, when we look at the L1 to L3, they are the U-shaped uh, vertebrae. While L, uh, L, uh, L4 is box shape and L5 is, is a bow tie shape. So this is how the the the, uh, the various lumbar vertebrae from L1 to L5. And this is important to label these vertebrae on the images. When we look at this image, this is how it looks like. This is T12 vertebrae and this L1, L2, L3 and L4. If you look at this, is L1 is U-shape, uh, L2 is U-shape, L3 is U-shape. L4 is basically box shape and L5 is, is a uh, bow tie shape actually. This is how it overlaps gradually on this. So this is important to, uh, uh, important to label the vertebrae appropriately because if you mislabel the vertebrae, the interpretation is going to be wrong and it is not very uncommon for the technologists to label these vertebrae abnormally. In addition to that, uh, we know that we do have a five lumbar vertebrae, but there have been a variation of uh, lumbar vertebrae from uh, four to even six, actually. And this is a, one of the excellent study published way back in 1993, actually, which is known as spine segmentation study, in which 375 women aged from 50 to 85 years old study. And it was found that only 83% of the uh, women had five lumbar vertebrae, and the lowest rib was on T12, uh, T12 vertebrae. This is a classical normal vertebrae with the 
towards the T uh, uh, T12 vertebrae actually. 7.5% people had four lumbar vertebrae and the lowest rib was on T11 or T12 actually. 2% had six lumbar vertebrae with the lowest rib on T12 or L1, while 7% had five lumbar vertebrae and the lowest rib was on T11. So when we are interpreting this image, the we look at this, the rib, uh, we look at the, uh, uh, the rib arising from T11 to T12, the ideal is, is T12 should be there. And we look at the L5 vertebrae and then we do the numbering actually. So, as I said, the spine should be straight. What really happens when there's a rotation of the spine actually? If we rotate the spine from 0 to 45 degree actually, this is a study, excellent study, uh, published, uh, uh, pub, published study, which it was shown that if L3 vertebrae is rotated from 0 to 45 degree, uh, the area the area under the organization changes actually progressively. As you can see, it is 12.96 square centimeters, while with rotation, the same vertebrae is now 16.07 square centimeters. The more mineral content of this is same, as we uh, remains the same despite the rotation, but if you look at a bone mineral density, bone mineral density is, is, a, is a ratio of bone mineral content divided by bone, uh, bone area, actually, measured area. So if the bone area is reducing, is increasing, and the bone mineral content is the same, so BMD starts reducing. Bone mineral density, which is gram per square centimeter, starts uh, reducing, actually. Or you can say increasing if the rotation is reversed, actually. So BMC is not affected by rotation, but BMD is affected because it makes a change in the area under the observation. In addition, there could be degenerative change in the spine. There could be a lot of osteophytes. As you age, the osteophytes really develop a lot of women from L4 to L uh, from L1 to L5 vertebrae. There could be osteochondrosis. Uh, there could be aortic calcification. As you can see in this little x-ray, you have seen the aortic calcification, and it is pretty common in elderly women. This is one of the excellent study of postmenopausal women from 40 to 84 years to see how much degenerative changes are prevalent in this population. And any degenerative changes present almost 60%, but osteophytes present 46%. Osteochondrosis is 21 percent, scoliosis is 22 percent, and vascular calcification is 34 percent. The most important thing is the osteoporosis, which is more prevalent after the age of 55, 60 years. These degenerative changes are pretty common. And as you age more, the prevalence of osteophytes, osteochondrosis, vertebral collapse, collapse, and vascular calcification also increases. Therefore, it is important to really look for these artifacts because they can give you falsely high values. This is uh, photographs of various uh, uh, patients of lumbar spine showing. This is a facetal uh, sclerosis. Uh, as you know that uh, uh, these early people can have facetal hypertrophy and calcification. So this is a facetal calcification. There could be mislabeling of there could be mislabeling of the vertebrae actually. Uh, the these horizontal lines should pass through the intervertebral spaces, uh, but these are not going exactly through this. So proper positioning of these lines are extremely important. There could be some foreign body here. You one can see the some button-like structure in the image field, which can alter uh, uh, the BMD value. And there could be sclerosis actually, which usually influences the BMD. Now, hip position is equally important actually. The person lies straight on the table with the internal rotation of the leg by almost 50 to 25 degree actually. The purpose of rotation is basically to bring the long axis femoral neck perpendicular X-ray beam. And, and this gives you the greatest area of the lower BMC. And this is how the pictures looks like. One can see the astabulum. Uh, Astrobulum. One can see the femoral uh, head, uh, femoral neck, greater trochanter and lesser trochanter, and this is the total. Uh, the the box uh, the box is gives you the total uh, hip uh, area as well as BMD. 
and this is the rectangular box across the neck of the femur gives you femoral neck actually the most important part i need to emphasize here that just lesser tubercle uh, trochanter should be just visible it should not be either highly prominent or not present at all that's highly undesirable it should be just visible but not too prominent or not visible now how does the lag rotation i said earlier that 50 to 25 degree of lag rotation is is is, is extremely important to put the proper position to have the proper bmd at the total hip and femoral neck what really happens so there is a customary position uh, which we i said 15 to 25 degree and when we do the external rotation or internal rotation there is a change in in the uh, bmd actually when we look at the mean difference and compare the customary with the external rotation or customary with internal rotation there is a change in the bmd of pretty significantly similarly a bm bone mineral contents also changes fibular neck area changes so it is important to have the the position of the lag uh, at the 15 degree and there is a very nice uh, 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 the panel is provided while doing the uh, bmd measurement uh, and it should be used a lot of technologists don't use it just to avoid that kind of extra work actually and that really is that really plays havoc with the reporting so when we look at rotation actually the femoral neck bmd can be changed almost 12% of the internal rotation and 8% after external rotation so these annual possibility that they could be hip osteoarthritis so how much osteoarthritis uh, how common is osteoarthritis of lumbar spine and uh, lumbar spine and hip actually and uh, so if you look at prevalence of osteophytes and joint space narrowing and sclerosis sclerosis in men and women of the age of 60 years when we look at a lumbar spine osteophytes are present in 61% of the women and almost 75% of the men actually similarly joint space narrowing and sclerosis is pretty common almost happening in 22 uh, 40 45% when we look at the hip the osteophytes are present in, uh, in women almost 27% in men almost 31% while joint space narrowing and sclerosis is not that common so practically speaking hip osteophytes has a minimal effect on the hip bmd which accounts for the only 2.2% of variation in the women but not in the men as given in this study now every every uh, every measurement requires a quality control every instrument requires a quality control and the same too is is for the for the for measurement of bmd dexa machine requires a very high degree of quality control actually and one should have a coefficient of variation now there when you looking at coefficient of variation uh, the variation comes from dexa machine per se and the person who is doing the bmd measurement actually so we look at the uh, coefficient of variation of the dexa machine and we look at the coefficient of variation in the measurement as done by the technologist and one uh, and any dexa machine can have a single technologist or multiple technologists and these are ways to define their coefficient of variation when we are looking at a quality control dexa machine normally all the dexa machines are supplied by device specific phantom actually and this phantom is calibrated daily Uh, on the machine and we look at a baseline bmd uh, we look at uh, measure the bmd for at least 20 times and we then we control the define the limit of baseline bmd plus minus 1.5% and actually this 1.5% any value is crossing 1.5% of standard deviation it is it should be disregarded and the machine should be recalibrated and da- this daily bmd is uh, is is basically plotted on a short chart or a cosm chart to detect the drift of the bmd value this is extremely extremely important and lot of uh, commercial centers ignore this kind of quality control because it is a half an hour effort to do the daily bmd and uh, looking at the quality control chart and cosm chart uh, when to reject the values and when to include the values actually now cross calibration of machine is important when you're replacing the machine so the cross calibration with of the previous machine with the next machine is uh, is required because there is a huge uh, transfer of huge amount of data into the next uh, machine when we are changing the software and hardware so you require a lot of cali- cross calibration of new machine with the older machine actually and if there is a need of cross calibration of various machines across various centers actually and there is a way of doing it and cross calibration is equally required for the 
system upgrade. This is a custom chart uh, for uh, basically of uh, BMD Phantom. This is a uh, there are three types of Phantom. One with a high BMD, one with a medium BMD, and one is a low BMD. And this is on on the x axis you have got uh, the time period actually, and the y axis you have the BMD. And one can see that uh, the the BMD values of the Phantom should lie within 1.5 percent of the mean value actually. Radio technology is actually important uh, in uh, in this uh, while, while doing the BMD measurements. And in fact, the if uh, the tactician has to be have adequate training on hundred subjects, and uh, and he should do the and to see the coefficient variation on this person actually uh, on a given given person, he should really measure the coefficient of variation. By his own measurement technique, actually, so he has to measure the BMD, the hip and spine, of thirty patients two times or fifty patients three times, actually. Then he can measure the the coefficient of variation induced by the technician, actually. So this has to be taken in account. If there are multiple technicians, so one has to take the mean of precision error, actually. Uh, there is one uh, uh, precision is which is a long term and a short term. Short term means any change is happening within one two weeks to one month time, and the long term is basis in the months or years actually. Why this is coefficient of variation is important because it is important when you are doing the serial BMD measurements. If a person undergoes BMD today and after one and a half or two years he requires another BMD, uh, so we need to see how much change is significant actually. So. And we require frequently for the repeat BMD either untreated patients or the patients who are treating uh, receiving the treatment for osteoporosis. So, in untreated patients, we measure the BMD to see the significant loss. Because if significant loss is happening, then uh, that it is a indication of treatment. Because if the loss continues for a longer period of time, the it may increase the uh, fracture risk actually. When the person is being treated for osteoporosis, uh, we need to monitor the change in the BMD actually, that how the, uh, the, the person is responding to treatment. Because if the BMD is increasing or stable and it is associated with a fracture risk reduction, but if there's a loss of the BMD, uh, loss of the BMD, that is a cause of concern because it could be because of failure of therapy or could be there could be other many reasons why you are losing uh, BMD what is despite the therapy actually. So when we do the rate of change or when we do the monitoring, we basically compare the BMD and not the T score. Uh, the reasons for that actually. The second question is how much of a difference is real and the difference is there. What does it mean actually? It is improving, reducing, and what is the kind of uh, the uh, the change or real BMD change? How much significant it is. So when we are comparing the serial BMD of the one person over a period of time, we look at the DEXA images on the two comparison studies. Actually, um, the the DEXA images should be similar and identical. The region of interest must be same. The measured area should be comparable. These are two parameters we should really look at it. The important thing is if ROI is region of interest is same but area is different, then one should look for the improper positioning, incorrect scan, or artifacts like fractures, degenerative changes. And, and every uh, DEXA machine has got a feature which is known as compare feature actually. So one should use that uh, this thing. This is importance of hip positioning in the consequent imaging. This is an imaging uh, done at one at baseline, and this is two years later. But if you look at the lesser trochanter in the first image, look at the second image, the difference in the BMD is pretty huge by the tune of plus 0 0.08 gram per square centimeter. But the, in the proper position, the first in the second, it is in the positive direction. But if the position is is come uh, if the the, uh, the patient position is properly done properly, where you can have the region of interest and, and the digital image of the hip similar to the baseline, actually, there is a significant decline in the BMD. So, positioning important. Now, compare BMDs and not the T score. A lot of people compare the T score and not T score because, uh, in fact, we should compare the BMD values and not the T score because T score depends on normative database actually, which may change with the software upgrades and therefore should not be compared to serial studies. 
uh, when we are comparing a BMD, uh, that is a gram per square two studies. Uh, so that's the reason we uh, we compare two studies. Uh, in addition, software also calculate the change in the BMD percent, change in the BMD, and annualized rate of change in the BMD. Now, how much of a difference in the BMD is real? Uh, the, this is important as we were discussing the coefficient of variation. So once we have a calculated coefficient of variation, we can calculate the least significant change. Least significant change is in, in simple terms. I can say that if least significant change is happening, uh, then I would say that the repeat value is different than the baseline value. And this is there's a lot of technological terms in this, and we, this is how we calculate the least significant changes. We multiply by uh, 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 at the uh, the precision error by 2.77, and we come out with a figure. This applies to the both the PS5 total hip as well as at the femoral nut. Now, this is an example of uh, serial uh, uh, example of serial BMD. One has got a baseline BMD of the spine at 0.866 gram per square centimeter. <coughs> Repeat is, is 0.8 through, and therefore there is a loss is around. Uh, 0.034 gram square centimeters. Least significant change is 0 0.08, and therefore this is really significant. <coughs> One can express this as a percentage actually. We compare it to the baseline divided by uh, 100 and loss of 4%, which is more than a significant change. So in summary, we can say that one should express a change in the terms of gram per square centimeters to see the single change. But one can express as a percentage, though it has got a flaws, but it is better to uh, better for understanding to the patient's terms because they understand percentage better as compared to the gram per square centimeters. Uh, here's a important, very, very important point, actually, that all the patients should be encouraged to return to the same set of follow-up scan. One should repeat the BMD at the same machine, this is very, very important because there is a, uh, uh, the different make of machine gives you different bone mineral densities. They have got a different normal database. Therefore, their T-score could be different. And even if they're from this machine, they're from the same manufacturer, the problem with the cross calibration is there. If they're cross calibrated across, then it's not a problem. Otherwise, one should repeat the that follow uh, that scan at the same machine, uh, machine actually. So, what are the sites when we are monitoring? Actually, uh, spine is, uh, lumbar spine is preferred because it is a it has got best precision. It is most responsive therapy, and we use L1 to L4 values if possible. If a PS spine is can only use, and one can use total hip, but femoral neck is less commonly used. Actually, total hip because it has got a better precision than a femoral. Neck. How frequently you sh one should measure the repeat BMD? Uh, when you are getting a treatment. Actually, this is based on the how much least significant change you expect actually on the treatment. And it is usually typically one and a half to two years time than the changes, uh, changes observable actually. So one should repeat the BMD after one and a half to two years time. But there are certain situations like rapid uh, bone loss, like glucocorticoid therapy, then more frequent, maybe six months or one year may be applied actually. Now, when you are doing the follow-up scan, and uh, so you are looking at two or three things: uh, is there any significant gain in the BMD, or the BMD is stable, or the, or, or there is significant loss in the BMD? Actually, what does it mean? A stable and increased BMD is 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 good actually because it is a reduction of fracture risk. Uh, but if the BMD is losing, actually, this is a cause of botheration. And one should be really looking at why it's happening. One has to check with the compliance with the medications. One should check the calcium and vitamin intake. Look for underlying condition or con uh, underlying disease or conditions. Many times it happens that one might have missed a multiple myeloma. One might have missed a what uh, vitamin D deficiency. There could be poor calcium and vitamin intake. They could be could be take they could be taking steroids. So many other reasons. So one has to really explore what is the reason why they are losing the bone actually. Now so far so good for the bone mineral density measurement. This is a new application of. Uh, DEXA machine for measurement of the vertebral heights, what we call it vertebral uh, uh, fracture assessment, actually. And this is a genetic classification on which we grade the vertebral fractures uh, of grade one, grade two, grade three, 
which is mild, moderate, and severe. And there are three types of deformities like wedge deformity, bioconcave deformity, and crush deformity. And this is how it looks like. If we look at the right panel, we look at the vertebral image from later viewpoint from L4, uh, from T4, thoracic 4 to L4. And one can really see boxy-like structures of the order vertebrae. And uh, these measure, these, these are the cross, uh, these are the points where we measure the height of each vertebrae and we have the normative data. If the the height of vertebrae of any site like anterior, middle, and posterior reducing by more than 20%, then we say the fracture is there. And one can really see the fracture of the lumbar spine. One can see the, the crush fracture uh, where the, uh, the height of the vertebrae of the mid is really markedly reduced actually. So I sum, I've summarized that the, the, the Analysis or acquisition of DAXA scan is not uncommon. Uh, errors can happen in scanning, measurement, interpretation, and they are not uncommon in clinical practice. Uh, serial follow-up requires focus on least significant change to determine efficacy of treatment. VF is an important tool, and attention to proper particular labeling is key. I'm sorry that I could not cover a large aspect of the another lot of important issues like body composition analysis, VFA, because scarcity of time. But thank you very much. And uh, since I'm not physically available and busy in some other conference or other lectures, actually, I'm sorry I couldn't give the physically, I would not be able to take your questions and uh, my, my colleagues uh, and uh, moderator would take up the questions for uh, for any queries or comments. Thank you very much. And thanks again to Harmon India uh, for organizing such a wonderful event and giving me this opportunity to speak on this small topic. Thank you very much.